Hi, welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Brenda. Today we're going to be telling you about some things that we're harvesting here on the farm. If you can see behind me, you can see that one of the things is apples. We've got loads of apples this year and I'm working on taking care of some of those. Jim's out in the field mowing some hay. He's been bringing home some logs and we're trying to get ready for the winter. So come on along with us today. So I thought I'd show you today what I've been up to inside. It's been uh, rather overcast outside and there's so many things that need to be put away for winter. So I've been in here working on that while Jim's out mowing hay and getting logs. This morning I made some spaghetti sauce out of our tomatoes. I had a box of tomatoes out there that needed to be used up. So we'll be having spaghetti for supper, but also I will be putting that away into um, uh, jars for the winter. I'll can that up and that'll make a few meals. And I this year purchased a juicer and I love it so far. My mom and my sister have one and um, what and I've been putting some apples in there and whoosh, that fogged everything up. So the apples go in the top or whatever you want to juice up. The middle section is where um, the juice forms. I don't know if I can get show you that, but I'll try. And then the bottom part is where you put water in. And there's a hose and juice drains out of the hose. And here's some of the end product. This is grape juice and elderberry juice that I uh, did up this morning and it's really good. We'll enjoy that this winter. I also, right now I have apples in there as I showed you, but I, I also made up a little bit of applesauce for ourselves. And last year I think we showed you our big squeezo that we use, but today I was just making a little bit for ourselves. This is the Foley food mill. You turn it and um, it squishes the apples and then the, the um, applesauce comes out the bottom. Turn it one way and scrape it back the other way. And applesauce comes out the bottom. So I'm on my way out to see Jim and I thought I'd just give you an update on the, the birds. They're all doing good. I let Connie out, Constantine over here, who was with the chickens. And even though he's still adjusting, he seems to be hanging out with the other guineas. And I'm not saying they get along, but they're getting along better. Jim's coming home on a kind of cloudy, cool afternoon. It's not real great for making hay today. So he decided to go up this afternoon and bring home a load of logs with the Belgians. He was mowing with the Percherons this morning and he's going to finish up mowing this afternoon. Here's a load of logs that Jim and the Belgians just brought home. His idea is that um, he wants to have some wood here to saw on days when he can't go logging because he's going to be logging quite a ways away from here. And so he wanted to have some things on hand for whatever needs to be done. Um, so he brought a load home. He's got a couple more he wants to bring home. So we used the Belgians to do that. So I'm in our crazy cornfield. The cow have been cows have been spending a lot of time out here. But honestly, it's kind of funny. The ears are still here, a lot of them. And the the leaves are gone. They're not nearly we're not they're not nearly done eating all this. They come and they go out of here but they sure do seem to like it but it's very interesting they seem to be loving the leaves we'll keep you posted on how things go uh, in the cornfield I was hoping they'd be out here so we could show you them eating but they're not here now so I'm in the field as you can see beyond the cornfield Jim and the Percherons mostly the Percherons have been mowing out here they started last night, but then he came back this morning and mowed with the Percherons for a few hours, gave them a break, went up and got the logs, and now he's back 
mowing some more. We have a nice stretch of weather coming. This is really nice. You know, it's nice, gonna be delicious hay uh, for the animals. It's, it's not very tall and it's just gonna be, I think they're gonna really like it. He still has a order to fulfill for second cut hay. So at least some of that will be going to that and some of it will probably be going into our barn. It doesn't add up to a whole lot of bales, but it does make super nice, nice feed that the animals really enjoy. There's our little cabin down there. We're at the very end of our field here. Hi everybody. How's it going? I was thinking how nice the, you know, the swath board is working. Yeah, it is. Really nice. It's and laying it's mowing, over nice. It's mowing nice too. Although, I just saw you stop a couple times. Yeah. But it I'm is, happy. you've gotten a lot done. It's a big, huge piece. And you're planning on finishing up? Yeah, I'll finish this up too. So it's the next day and Jim is here with the horses. He's picking me up at the door here. We're gonna go up the road to Abby's house, drop off some tamarack lumber for her that um, the builders need for her project up there. And then we're gonna pick up a load of Catch logs up. that are up in the woods to bring home and I think they're going to be sawed into lumber for her house as well, right? Some. Some of it. So of course we got Lady and Bill this morning. And we've been asked frequently how long we're going to work Lady and we've tried to answer people but how long is that, Jim? She'll be working pretty regularly until, until you know, December, and then uh, we'll slow down. And the three amigos are out here this morning. Hey, we're 
we're gonna pull into Abby's place. So if you're new to our channel and don't know what's going on here, this is our daughter Abby's house that she's renovating. And she has a YouTube channel called A Drill and a Dream. If you're interested, you can check that out. We'll put a, a link to it in the description below. Now we're gonna head up to the woods and get a load of logs. <clears throat>
explain a couple things about my wagon right here. I really like my wagon. And as you can see, it is a tandem. So there's two tires, a set of tires back here on both sides. So there's actually six tires on this wagon. And I have two sets of bunks. I have this one here and this one. So these two bunks. And up front, I have two more bunks. So because of that, it's very easy for me to put on a long log on the outside right here and then I can what I call double up eights or eights and tens. So I have a bunch of eight footers right here and on the back bunk I have a bunch of eights and tens. I've gone as even far as taking 12 foot long or even, even um, doubling up uh, um, 12s even because my my tongue or the pole in this wagon is long enough I can extend these out quite a ways from the front bunk and then I'll have the long ones on the outside and I'll go even more doubles in the center and kind of work my way up and then tie the whole load off with long stuff so that it all is kind of tied together and then I strap it down so I can get quite a big load on this wagon. So we're coming out of the woods with this pretty good sized load. Um, I'm curious what your thoughts are. Uh, I know a lot of people watch my channel because they're um, just interested in what I'm doing. But a lot of people have a lot of experience. Those people that do have experience, I'm curious. Uh, you you want to take a, a guess as to how many board feet I have in this load. I will scale these logs up when I get home. So this will be the log scale that I will use to scale these logs up. When I saw it into lumber, which I'm not going to do all at once, so we won't know on this particular load, but generally when we scale a load of logs, from the log scale, the lumber scale is a little bit, there's usually a little bit of an overrun. So if there's, you know, 100 board feet in the log form, there may be, you know, 110 board feet in the lumber form. So, um, we're not gonna deal with the lumber form for today, but I'm just curious if anybody wants to take a guess how many board feet are on this wagon, and I will scale it up at the end of the video. Give you a good shot. Hold it back. Hold it back. Hold it back.
I should have had Brenda get off, and I know I'm doing wood going down these hills. Oh, oh, because these big loads, it's hard to stop or hold back coming down these hills. And uh, I can remember years and years ago, I was coming down this same hill, and my neck yoke, which is what is in front of the pole that holds, helps to hold the load back. Oh, oh. It more than just helps the load hold the load back, it holds the load back. I don't have any brakes in this trailer, so that's all we have to hold the back, hold this load back, the horses. So, um, what happened though, as I was coming down right there years and years ago, my neck yoke, one side broke. And so that meant that we're in trouble. And the horses in the wagon kind of rolled off to the side, and there's a big old stone right there. I can remember hitting that stone and somehow throwing this cart sideways and I was thrown off the cart. I held the lines and I was able to stop the horses. Um, no serious damage was done, but uh, just the same. When, when I'm going downhill, and even if I'm going up a steep uphill with a heavy, heavy load, I generally don't let riders ride with me. I let them walk. So we have one more hill down farther that I will have Brenda get off and walk down that, but uh, most of the time she can ride. I kept up. Okay, so we got the load all unloaded, and now all we have to do is scale it up. And I'm not going to show all that. And, uh, some other time on another video, I'll show and explain. But this is a scale stick here, and I go through and I just um, go to the small end of the log and put the point at the inside the bark, and then it will tell you exactly. These are eight footers here, and it'll tell you exactly how many board footage is in each one. You have to take in consideration crooked stuff, though and any red rod or anything like that. These logs here are very poor quality stuff. They're small, they're a little bit crooked. So because of that, the scale is a lot lower than it would normally be on good logs. But um, these are my logs. I don't even have to worry about being exact because no one's gonna get hurt other than, uh, no one will get hurt at all because I don't have to scale these logs up, but I'm gonna do it just for the sake of knowing how much was on this load. And then, I hope that you have stopped the video and even taken a guess as to how much was on that, this load. And if not, you still can. 
and in a couple minutes I will tell you the total of this load. Okay, so we got our total. We have 1,015 board feet on this load. I actually thought it might have been a little bit bigger than that because it's a pretty good sized load, but the poor quality stuff, the small logs just don't add up. Anyways, that's what we have. I hope you enjoyed this video. You have a great day.